you. You are that. So many people today don't realize that it's of the utmost importance to look down and realize where you are building. What are you building on? Are you building upon the truth? Are you building upon the revelation of who Jesus is? Or are you building on the sands, doctrinal forms and fashions, rituals and traditions that when the floods are gone, you'll be gone? I want to remain when it's all over. I want to have the truth when it's done. I want to have the blessings when it's all finished. Don't you saints? Go ahead and clap your hands and give Jesus a great big cheer. I want to have the power when it's all over. <laughs> Upon this rock, God wants to build you into his church. God wants to put you in his church. There will be people, if you want them to, they'll come around to your house and sign you up. Collect your tithe once a month. And tell you you're going to heaven. But you're not in the church. There's a lot of people who've got a lot of programs, blessing packs. Are you out of luck? Your luck gone bad and sour? You're down on your luck? You better get away from these lucky bunch. Because God don't deal in luck. God deals in power. And God deals in the promise. And God's got a rock. And if you'll get on that rock, there's not a power in hell can put you under. And there's nothing put, can put a curse on you if God's put his blessings on you. You got them today. All their aim is, is to get you in the clutches of their hands and control you through fear. And many times they'll come into your houses and lead, Paul or one of the writers said, lead silly women captive. Most people today wouldn't know the difference between real discernment and witchcraft. There's a move of God that's real. There's a move of the Spirit that has power to heal. In the anointing, I've been feeling a sensational Spirit that God put in my life just in the last few months. That I've seen it open the eyes of the blind. I've seen it unstop deaf ears and cure cancers. I'm not the healer, but somewhere beyond my flesh and my spirit, there's a holy habitation where God lives. And we're the temple of God. And if we'll get a hold of this and know that we're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, not this flesh, this carnal flesh, but his spiritual flesh, his word, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We begin to realize that his anointing is real. Then we can release these rivers of water, turn loose and let these waters flow. And let this light glow and bring healing and deliverance to the people. But when the games are over and the entertainment's done, will you have what it takes to make it to the other side? In the 25th chapter of Matthew, you'll find that there were ten virgins. Five were foolish and five were wise. Those foolish woke up in the midst of, of the awful situation in their life. They had, they had realized that they were out of oil, no light. The games were over. The entertainment was gone. But the wise had the oil in their vessels. And their lamps were burning at the midnight hour. Jesus is coming. The only one's going to make it a day that's built upon that rock. And that rock is the truth. Somebody say amen. There are those today that say, don't prophesy to me. Preacher, prophesy real good things, but don't prophesy things that might happen to me. Don't tell me things I don't want to hear. Tell me what I want to hear. Prophesy sweet things, but God said if you'd stood in my counsel and known what I wanted you to know and learned my will, God said, then you should have caused people to turn from their evil ways. It does make a difference. You shouldn't be one thing in the church building, another thing on the streets. God said you're a holy people and a holy nation. A royal generation, a royal priesthood. Oh, glory to God. you got to be the same thing. God wants you to be the same. Somebody say amen. It is important to God. It does make a difference to God. It does make a difference what we are. It does make a difference. Somebody say amen. It makes a difference. But when this thing's over, when it's all said and done, I want to be part of that eternal kingdom, that rock that nothing can sweep me out of his hands. He said, if you're in my hands, no man can pluck you out. 
He said, if you're in my father's hand, no man's able to pluck you out. And then he said, I and my father are one. This is the gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? It's a realm of people that are built upon a firm foundation. That foundation is Jesus Christ. He's laid in Zion. And his apostles began to build. And they presented you a gospel that he left in their hands the keys to the kingdom. Peter used those keys to unlock that door and offer thousands the opportunity to walk in. You don't have to. But one day, millions will wish they had. The Holy Ghost is for you. This Holy Ghost is real. And His gifts are real today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In your bylaws, a lot of you have ruled out tongues and interpretation and the gifts of God. But they're still real. You may never operate them. You may never have them. But they're still real. They wouldn't have Jesus in Nazareth. They threw him out of Nazareth, but just down the road he was raising the dead. They took him to the top of the hill where Nazareth was built upon a hillside and were ready to throw him down the hill because he told them who he was. But just down the road he was walking on the water filling nets with fish, healing the sick, casting out devils, even raising the dead, performing miracles. Men were tearing roofs off the buildings to get the sick and the afflicted to him just down the road. If you won't praise him, if you're ashamed to lift up your hands and worship him, if you're ashamed to let tears run down your cheeks, if you're ashamed to testify about him and tell people who you know in your heart really that he is, then he'll move just down the road. He'll find somebody that's not ashamed to lift up their hands. If you in this tabernacle tonight, I'll tell you on this hillside, if we won't praise him, somebody will. And if we don't take this television thing and take it to the nations of, uh, of people, somebody's going to get it. God will give it to somebody else. But I'll tell you one thing. If he does, I'm going where it's going. I'm going with the river. I'm going where the move is. Somebody said, praise the Lord. I'm not sitting in Nazareth humped up on a sidewalk uh, and die. I'm not going to do it uh, when he's just down the road healing the sick and casting out devils. I'm going to find where this Nazarene is and I'm going to press through the crowd and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. Glory be to God. If it takes it, I'll cry out of the crowd like Bartimaeus did. Hallelujah to God. If it takes it, I'll climb a sycamore tree like, uh, like Zach just did. I'll do it, brother. Glory to God that I can get where he is. I don't want to be where people won't praise him. I don't want to be where people won't worship him. I want to get on that rock where somebody will shout a little bit and praise God a little bit. Somebody that loves Jesus, raise your hand and shout yes. Shout yes. On that rock. Somebody say this rock. I didn't hear you like I want to. This rock. I'll build my church. Call by his name. Fill with his spirit. Say amen. Jezebel's about ready to be cast into a bed. All of those that commit adultery with her, have illegal dealings with her, illegal spiritual dealings. are going to be cast or put into great tribulation. God said, I'm going to kill our children with death. Hear me. You want life? It only comes through the rock. The water, ladies and gentlemen, I speak the truth. The water still flows only from the rock. Jesus stood there that day and he said, He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He's still a rock. There's no God like our rock. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. 
If you begin to read and begin to study, and I'm closing. If you begin to read and study, you'll begin to find out that he's more than just a man. And multitudes of people in this tabernacle tonight have found out that he is more than just a man. But I want to talk to you with the means of television tonight. I want to talk to you. Do you feel like there's something missing down in here, way down inside? Perhaps you are like I was, raised up in a religious organizational teaching that denied his power and didn't even realize it. Looked around and your foundation was sand and didn't even know it. If you hear these words and you really want them, perhaps I've said something that might have stimulated you. Maybe I made you a little angry, but made I, maybe I touched you some way. Maybe because of the touch that God's put on my life, I know who Jesus is. Maybe, just maybe, you'll realize that Jesus Christ is more than Mary's boy more than Joseph's son and realize that he's your rock. He's the water, the supply. He's the bread. He's everything to you. And if you will turn your affections to him, yield your spirit and your heart to him and say, God, I don't want you the way that religion says I've got to have you. But I want you the way you want me to have you. And open your spirit and your heart. His light will break forth in you. And you will begin to realize a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory when you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have found out that Jesus Christ was the Lord from heaven himself. Satan's eyes was blinded to this. The princes of this world were blind to who Jesus was. They had never crucified the Lord of heaven, Paul said. But when you begin to realize this, it will change your life. I want you to listen closely to this. Without that special touch, you cannot even receive this revelation. But if you'll open your heart and your spirit, God will give it to you. Paul was a ruthless man. Paul was a killer and a murderer. Paul the apostle the very one you've read about was a man that breathed out slaughter and threatenings against those people that believed in the name of Jesus. But on the Damascus road, God changed his life. He received that divine special touch that only God could give. And from that moment forward, Paul's life was dramatically changed. He later told the Galatians that God, he found out, had separated him from his mother's womb had chosen him, picked him out by his grace, and chose him to reveal his son. Listen to this. His son in him, capital S-O-N. That's that same touch that Simon Peter had that day. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. It changed Paul's life. Listen to this real close. He said, I immediately conferred not with flesh and blood. Flesh and blood don't know who Jesus is. Denominational teachings won't tell you who he is. You go 20 years to Bible college, and I'm not against education, but they'll never tell you who Jesus is. But one touch from his divine hand. Oh, glory to God, if you will just open your heart and say, Jesus, if you're what this man says you are, I want you to enter me, penetrate me with your power and your spirit. He'll open your mind. He'll open your heart. He'll fill you with that energetic light that will disperse the darkness and make you become a new creation, a new creature in himself. Flesh and blood won't help you. Men will tell you to stay away from it. Men will warn you. They'll say, you don't go and hear that man that talks so much about Jesus, do you? I'm here to tell you that I didn't write this book. I don't know. I didn't plan being here on this Saturday night on these stages. I didn't plan it, but God did, and I'm here to tell you that flesh and blood will never tell you who Jesus is, but a prophet, a, a teacher, a preacher, a man of God under the anointed will stand and tell you he's more than just a man. He's king of kings and lord of lords, and he is still that rock that the church is solidly built upon, that foundation 
rock. When you learn, when you know that he's more than just a man, I want you to bow your heads here. I feel God's anointing. When you know that you've stepped over the line and that Jesus is beginning to come into focus and that he is that rock, that same rock that Moses was put in the cleft of, that same rock that the water came out of. He's still the same to a thousand generations. It will change your life. And you will begin to study the word and realize that in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily and that you're complete in him that God was in Christ, that God the Spirit hath made this same Jesus, both Lord and Christ, Spirit and body, Father and Son, Lamb and Shepherd. He is the rock that will keep you solid, solid in Him. When you realize that, there's not a power that can pluck you out of His hand. Father, I pray for the people that are watching this by television. In the name of Jesus, I release my anointing into their lives. I speak the word of faith. And I ask God that you help them to comprehend and understand that if they're not getting the real word, that they need to find the word of a prophet and get under the teaching of truth that they might know the, the rock the King of glory. I give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And he was more than a man as he walked along the shores of Galilee. This broadcast has been brought to you by the R.A. West Ministries, faith partners and supporters in this area. Yeah.